Buenos dias y bienvenidos a todos. Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Holy Name of Mary Virtual Parish. We are so happy that you have chosen to be with us on this beautiful fifth Sunday of Easter. We extend a warm welcome and a special blessing of love to all our moms who are celebrating this special day. If we would be here together in the parish, we would say, if you are one of the many types of moms out there, I would invite you to stand up now, right where you are. God bless you all. As you might know, the American Red Cross has asked us to host an emergency blood drive for those in our area who are in need of blood. It will be held here in our Hall for All on Wednesday, May 20th. You must pre-register online and all the, all the information you will need will be posted in our virtual weekly bulletin and in our midweek bulletin. Now is the time to donate, if we can, a part of our hearts for those most in need. Thank you for sharing. Know that you are in our prayers wherever you are. We pray you are staying healthy and safe, and all of us here at Holy Name of Mary are with you in spirit. Our celebrant this morning is Father Rich. So let us begin our celebration in prayer for the quiet intentions in our hearts and for the mass intentions of all those who are hard at work researching and working to find a cure and a vaccine to the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the light and the love that comes from following and believing in Jesus Christ be always with you. And with your spirit. Morning, everybody. Welcome. And as we celebrate Mother's Day, we're reminded that we've never done it this way before. And as we come together and connect with our spirits to celebrate this mystery of God's love, we recognize we couldn't do that if it was not for our mothers and our fathers. But today we remember them. Christ Jesus, you lovingly remind us that you are with us always. You are the way, the truth, and the life. But it's easy for us to feel lost and alone, especially during times such as these. In our loneliness, we pray. <laughs> Sometimes we're not honest with ourselves or those closest to us. And for the times when we are not truthful. And for the times when we have failed to live our lives fully, freely, and more faithfully to you and to those whom we say we love. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to forgive each other. Lord Jesus, Weary as we are after this long period, inspire us to see and appreciate things in a new way. Help us to rethink ordinary things, to see them in a different light, observe them from a different perspective. Let us reassess our own little corners of the world. Help us to refocus our inner vision, to rediscover the beauty of our family, especially our mothers, and to comprehend how you continue to use them to show us your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the Twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task. Whereas we ourselves shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. de la primera carta del apóstol San Pedro. Hermanos, acérquense al Señor Jesús, la piedra viva, rechazada por los hombres, pero escogida y preciosa a los ojos de Dios, porque ustedes también son piedras vivas que van entrando en la edificación del templo espiritual para formar un sacerdocio santo destinado a ofrecer sacrificios espirituales agradables a Dios por medio de Jesucristo. Tengan presente que está escrito, He aquí que pongo en Sion una piedra angular, escogida y preciosa. El que cree en ella no quedará defraudado. Dichosos, pues ustedes, que han creído. En cambio, para aquellos que se negaron a creer, vale lo que dice la Escritura. La piedra que rechazaron los constructores ha llegado a ser la piedra angular y también tropiezo y roca de escándalo. Trompiezan en ella los que no creen en la palabra y en esto se cumple un designio de Dios. Ustedes, por el contrario, son estirpe escogida, sacerdocio real, nación consagrada a Dios y pueblo de su propiedad, para que proclamen las obras maravillosas de Aquel que los llamó de las tinieblas a su luz admirable. Palabra de Dios.
From the Gospel according to John. Glory to you. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I'm going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and still you do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? For the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I'm going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I'm guessing you're sitting in a comfortable place place at home, either by yourself or with someone you love and care for on this special day. I'm in church here now with Patrick, who's filming, and Deacon Jose and Deacon Marv and Brenda and Lonnie and Debbie and Trevor and Candice and Gabby. And they're all sitting at least 20 feet apart. They have lots of space here. And some of them are sitting in your favorite spots, in your pews that you usually sit on on Sunday. So we acknowledge your spirits here. And through the gift of the internet and technology, we're able to be in Holy Communion this morning. Not the way that we would like it, want it, but the way that it is. And we're grateful for it. In a recent episode of the newspaper comic strip, For Better or Worse, 18-year-old Lizzie is excitingly preparing to go away to college. 
while her 22-year-old brother, Michael, has been off on his own for the past four years and is about to graduate. Lizzie says to Michael, no matter what, I can't wait to move out of this place, Mike. I feel so tied down here, so monitored. I want my freedom. I want to live a new life, go to a new town, meet new people, experience new things. So tell me, Michael, what's the best part of being, you know, like totally being out there and independent on your own? What's the best part? Michael says quietly, coming home. Coming home. John O'Donohue wrote this reflection on mothers. I usually read them at funerals sometimes. Mothers, your voice learning to soothe your new child was the first home sound we heard before we could see. Your young eyes gazing on us was the first mirror where we glimpsed what to be seen could really mean. Mother, your nearness tilled the air, an umbilical garden for all the seeds of thought that stirred in our infant hearts. You nurtured and fostered this space to root all our quietly gathering intensity that could grow nowhere else. Mother, formed from the depths beneath your heart, you know us from the inside out. No deeds or seas or others could ever erase that. About a month and a half ago, one of our parish families was expecting twins. And about six weeks before the date of the baby's arrival, uh, the mother went into labor and was taken to the hospital and she delivered the two baby boys, each weighing when delivered less than a pound. They were in the incubators for quite a long time. And I remember going over to see them and to bless them and to look at the miracles that were there, wondering whether they would be alive or not. And I'm sharing this because I found it quite appropriate last night. I got an email from the father with pictures of the two boys who are now four pounds and are beginning to breastfeed. It were beautiful images of how they have grown and become who they are now because of a mother who carried them in her womb and made that womb their first home. And I reflected on my own mother and my own life, as I usually do on this day, but other days, and recognize whatever relationship I had or you had with your mother. We're here today because of at one point we spent nine months in a home that was secure and beautiful and took care of everything that we needed in order to be here today. That's a beautiful reading in 
the gospel of Jesus reminding us of the same, I am the way, the truth, the life, the way. And in the way, it's not a map. It's not a diagram that you follow this way. He doesn't introduce us to a map to follow. He invites us to a relationship to live. If we're interested, this period of being secure in safe sanctuaries we call home, for me, has caused me to be a little more grateful for solitude, grateful for fortitude, and gratitude. So as we celebrate Mother's Day today, hopefully we each pause and reflect on this space that we're privileged to call home. And the people who live in that home with us and help us to create that place. And to recognize that we have the power to create a place that we can call home where we all belong. I'm grateful for my mother for many gifts she gave me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to name them all, but one of the major ones was she was a woman who always said yes. Uh, she wouldn't have attributed to Mary, Mary's yes in the Magnificat, but my mom was always available to do what was ever needed in the midst of taking care of myself and my brother, a single mother with two children working, cleaning, washing clothes, ironing, preparing meals. And always was the one that was called on to help others. I'm grateful I got that gift. And I acknowledge today as I stand before you and am with you, I am who I am because of the life my mom and dad breathed into me. In closing, I wrote this after 9-11. And remember there was a period of time when it was 9-10 and we were living one way. And then there was 9-11 and we were living another way. And maybe 9, 12, 13, 14, and we lived another way. But we might have gone back to the way it was on 9-10. And we're caused now again to have another 9-11 experience to help us refocus. And so after the tragedy, their priorities were different. Petty concerns and anxious worries about inconsequential matters were readily put to rest. It was easier to differentiate between what was important and what was not. Relationships with family and friends were valued more, tended with greater care, and cherished with more gratitude. Long-standing ruptures in relationships were healed. Revenge and resentment were surrendered. Rather than rush headlong through week after week of work, after the tragedy, these survivors made time for noticing the beauty of the world around them and within them. People became more important than things and things were valued in as much as they could be used to help people. Each new day was greeted with gratitude rather than dread, and every difficulty just seemed a little smaller than it had been before. The miracle 
of surviving became the reference point for living, for understanding, and appreciating everything that has happened to us. May this time, this day, remind us of where we came from, of who we are and whose we are, and to be grateful for the life that we still have to live and share with each other. Merciful, merciful God, you care for us as a mother cares for her children. In your heart, we place our cares and our concerns trusting in your love. Our response is, we trust in your love. For Pope Francis and all who guide us, may their spirits be renewed as they guide us on our faith journey. Loving God, we, we trust, trust in, in your, your love. love. For all mothers, as well as those taking on the role of motherhood, may they find joy and peace in their homes and in those they hold in their mantle of love. Loving God, we trust in, we your, trust love. in your love. For all whose lives and faith are continued to be challenged by loss of employment, lack of food or resources, and lack of hope. Loving God, we trust, we trust in, in your, your love. For all those on the front lines who continue to put their lives at risk for us, may their strength, hope, and love be renewed and refreshed. Loving God, we, we trust, trust in, in your, your love. love. For those who are sick and suffering, especially those fighting the coronavirus, and for those who have died, and those who love them. Loving God, we, we trust, trust in, in your, your love. love. Today is also the feast of Saint Damien, and that feast and his life seems to take on a new life today when we recognize and see what it means when there's a pandemic and when people are, are sick and isolated and there's no one to care for them. We see how that man chose to put himself where he did with the people that he did, taking care of them when no one else would. And we're grateful that we're a community that has a special devotion to him. So for all those who continue to, like him, place themselves in places they'd rather not be, doing things they'd rather not do with people they don't even know, so new life can be born, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Gentle woman, quiet alone. strong and bright gentle
together, we pray that our gifts of bread and wine, the gift of ourself as we are and are becoming, will be acceptable to God, our loving Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all the church. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, you renew our church in every age by raising up men and women outstanding in holiness, living examples of your unchanging love. They inspire us by the ways they choose to live their life. They help us by their prayers so we can recognize you, the living God, in each person you created. And so together, as one family, we proclaim the power of your love as together we pray. indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of your son. The night before he died, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant it will be shed for you and for all my people so that sin will be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. You have set us free. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for bringing us here this morning to celebrate the life you breathe into us. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought more closely together in our families, and in our church. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love, together with each other, with Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share the fullness of life with Mary, St. Joseph, St. Damien, and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory 
by the ways we choose to live the gospel we've come to believe. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. confidence in God as our creator. Together we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but upon the goodness and the love within the hearts of those who continue to try to live the gospel and grant them the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. And let's just pause for a while and ask God to bless those people in our lives who we know may not be at peace with that gift. is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we who have been called to share in his life. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Today, loving God, we pray for our mothers who cared for us when we were helpless, who comforted us when we were hurt, whose love and care we sometimes took for granted. Today, we pray for those who are grieving the loss of their mother, maybe even years after they have been separated for those who never knew their biological mother and yearned for her, those who have experienced the wonder of an adopted mother's love, those families separated through war, through the virus, give them special blessings. For new mothers coming to terms with both the joys and the demands of motherhood, for pregnant mothers expectant and wondering or fearful, for mothers who are tired and stressed, ill or depressed, for those who struggle daily to balance the demands of work and the care of their children, for those who are unable to feed their children due to poverty, for those whose children have physical, mental, or emotional disabilities, for those who have children on their own, those who have lost a child For those who care for the children of others. For those whose children have left home. For those children who have rejected the love of their mother. For those whose desire to be a mother has not been fulfilled in the way that they wish. Bless all mothers, that their love may be deep and tender, and that they may lead their children to know and do what is good and just, living not for themselves, but for you, O God, and for others. Amen. Someone gave me this reflection by Barbara Kingslover. It says about mothers, it kills you to see them grow up, but I guess it would kill you quicker if they didn't. I thank my God each time I think of you. And when I pray for you, I pray with joy. I hope you do the same for me. The Lord be with you. With your May the blessings of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon each of you sitting in front and those beyond your doors who you love and give you his peace. Let us live what we just celebrated. Thanks be, thanks be to God.